want you to pay attention to me now. I want you to turn to the 20th book of the New Testament. Turn to the 20th book of the New Testament. Okay. James. Ah, you're so spoiled. James. Since it's the year 2021, I chose to go to the 20th book of the New Testament or the New Covenant, the book of James. In the book of James, there's only two chapters that have 21 verses. Chapter 1 and chapter 2, I chose chapter 2 because of my subject matter today. So you're in James, you're in the second chapter, you're in verse 21 because this is the year 2021. I'm going to start with verse 21 because it's a year 21. And I want you to notice that James opens with a question on justification by faith. In verse 22, he gives the theme of justification. In verse 24, he comes back to the theme of justification. Then he gives an example, and then he makes a conclusion about the theme Justification by works. Justification by faith, not works. So let's take a look at the question in verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? The answer is yes. Then he gives the theme. You see the faith was working with his work. Now, I'll explain that to you. You got the faith cycle. Faith comes by hearing, believing, applying, and completing. That's the faith cycle. You must learn that because that's how faith works. See, James talking about how faith works. He's talking about how faith works. And here's how faith works. You got to hear it. You got to, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. That word of God by faith is developed into faith in yours about that specific issue. Today, justification by faith. That's brought to application of your life. How you live your Christian life is justified by faith. So your justification by faith that comes at salvation is now experientially in the Christian life. Somebody says to you, well, how do you know you're saved by grace through faith and not of yourself? Because the Bible says so. What's the scripture say? So there we have it. So how does justification by faith work? It, it starts by hearing, believing. Now here's what's important. There's a second half to this. Applying and completing. Applying and completing is when faith, watch what, watch what he says. You see that faith was working with his works? That's what we're talking about. How does faith work? You have to go through the completion cycle where what God promised you, he brings to completion, Romans 4.21. What he's promised, he has obligated himself to you that whatever he's promised you, it's up to him to bring it to completion. It's up to you to wait till he does it. Okay? Psalms 27.14, wait on the Lord. Is he faithful? Yeah, he's faithful. That could well be his middle name, huh? Faithful. God is faithful. That's why he requires faith. He requires faith so that he can show you he's faithful. Requires faith so he can show you he's faithful. And that's what he means in verse 22. You see, the faith was working with his works. When he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar, what was, what was he doing? He was an application, right? He put the son on the altar, drew the knife, and waited for God to do whatever God was going to do. And, and God rescued him, didn't he? Like he always does. Because God is faithful. He is faithful to your faith. God is faithful to faith. And so he, sa he says, do, do you see, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac on the altar? And the answer is yes. 
You see that faith was working with his works. Do you see? Do you see how the faith works? Do you see how faith works? Do you see that faith was working with his work as a result of the works? Faith was completed. See, completed. That word perfect means completed. Right? It's completed. Your faith is completed because God is faithful. That's a characteristic of God. God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 1.9. So he, 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 then he says, the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness, and therefore he was called the friend of God. You know, it's one thing to be called the son of God. It's another thing to be called the friend of God. See, he's called a friend of God when he's learned to bring his faith to completion where, where God shows out. See, God wants to show out. When he does, you've seen his glory. And then you show out because you've seen his glory. You're full of praise. The scripture says is what's important. Then he comes back to the theme. You see... See the theme? You see? Are you getting it? You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Do you understand that? This is a faith cycle. Then he gives an example. In the same way, was not, here's a question, was not Rahab the harlot? You know, there's some titles in your life you probably never get rid of except, except by the grace of God. Now, here she is. She's in, the, she's in the birth, she's in the genealogy of the birth of Jesus Christ, and yet James refers to him as Rahab the harlot. You know why? She's a trophy of God's grace, is she not? She's a trophy of God's grace. Are we not all trophies of God's grace? Be careful the next time you, you put your nose up in the air about somebody's behavior. Listen, we're all saved by grace through faith. None of us are righteous. No, not one. So don't get, don't get just because you got a little doctrine in your soul and you maybe lived a day without a, too, too terrible much sin, don't, don't, don't think you're, well, you know what I mean. Don't get high and mighty about all that until you get to heaven. In the same way, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by faith when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? The answer, yeah, how? Faith cycle. That's how faith works. Faith cycle, and when it gets to the work side of it, God does it because God's faithful to do what he's promised, Romans 4.21. And then he gives, an, he, gives a concluded, he gives a conclusion idea about this. He says, for just as the body without the human spirit is dead. You know, when, when you're born, he, God puts the spirit in you of life. And when you die, he removes it. You do know that. You've been to funerals. For just as a body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. What's he talking about without works? He's talking about the faith cycle. It's got to bring it around where, where God shows himself out as faithful. That's my message to you today. 2021. 20th book, verse 21. Is a message to walk through. You will need that. You will need that 2021 this year. You'll need it. Because if, if America did not get awakened in 20, you'd better hold on to your seat for 21. I'm not sure we've learned anything. 
I hate to say that because I'm the most optimistic person in the whole wide world. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word therefore, he, he's, he's coming to, he's, he's going to make a conclusion or from 23, 24, 25, then he's going to do a study from it. I, that's what I'm doing. Let's go back to 23, 24, 25. Now, not for his sake only was it written that it was reckoned to him, credited to him, but for our sake also. It is not just Old Testament, but because it involves Jesus Christ, it's also New Testament. So he's, he's in a subject about Abraham. If you read the fourth chapter, he's all about Abraham. Verse 22, it, it was reckoned to him, Abraham, as righteousness. Now, not for his sake only was it written that it was reckoned to him, but for our sakes also, to whom it will be reckoned, credited. Where we, where's the Old Testament guys going to get their credit? And how are we going to be connected with their credit? The cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. I came to fulfill it, he says. But for our, but for our sake also, to whom it will be reckoned, as those who, believed, who believe in him, who raised Jesus from the dead, he who was delivered up, that's the cross, because of our transgressions, that's Adam's sin, Romans 5, 12 through 21, and was raised, resurrection, and was raised because of our justification. In other words, Jesus Christ got to die on a cross. He's got to be buried and raised from the dead on the third day of the burial to establish justification by faith. We are saved by justification by faith. I've done a, a whole series of studies on that, so if this is the first time you're listening to this, there's, I don't know, seven other lessons on this subject. Go to our website, Doctrinal Studies, for those who are visiting with us by the Internet, and go to the click on series, and look for justification by faith, and you can, you can study all the lessons on justification. This is my final lesson. Therefore, because Jesus died on the cross, was buried and raised from the dead to give us justification by faith, therefore, having been justified by faith, when we believe the gospel of Christ, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to watch something. Look up here. I want you to watch something. In five verses, he's going to give you six benefits. He's going to give you six benefits of being justified by faith. The moment you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and you better do it because the consequences of dying without Christ are not good. Because, the, listen, the power to save you is in the gospel. The gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes it. Now, that is so you can be justified by faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift. Justification. You, once you believe the gospel of Christ, you are justified by faith, and you are always justified by faith. Always. It's a gift. It's one of the 50 things you receive at salvation, never, never losing time in eternity. We call it phase one justification. You know, phase, three phases in the plan of God. Phase one, salvation. Phase two, the Christian life. Phase three, eternity with God. Watch for six things. You with me? You're going you're gonna to look for six things? All right. I'm going to put five on your paper because it ran out of space. So I'm going to give you the six, a, a, a sixth one. Now, I already gave you one. Agreed? Do you have one? I just gave you one. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have what? 
Peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, watch for him. Through whom also we have obtained our instruction by faith into this grace. Isn't it interesting how he said that? Our introduction by faith into this grace, that salvation grace. But listen, it's more than that. That Listen, grace salvation is your entrance into faith, right, Rick? It's your introduction into the whole aspect of the grace of God. We talk about saving grace and logistical grace and suffering grace and growing grace and dying grace and surpassing grace in the Christian life. Your, introdu your introduction under justification by faith, you are introduced into God's grace system. Ma, ma, ma. Through whom we also have attained our instruction by our introduction by faith into this grace, in which this this grace, this grace in which we stand. That's a perfect tense. You know how you stand there in the perfect tense. What you received as salvation, it's your responsibility to embrace it. We stand and we exalt. So have you got another one? You got, I gave you two now. You got two? You got two. Here's third. We exalt in hope of the glory of God. You got that one? What is that one? Hope. Hope of the glory of God. And that a marvelous way to say it. And not only this, there's more. Oh my goodness, there's more? And not only this, there's more. We, but we also exult in tribulations. What do you suppose that is? Undeserved suffering. Ah, come on now. Undeserved suffering. That's part of the package of salvation. Oh, Ron, are you kidding me? Write this down. Philippians 129. It was granted not only to believe, but to suffer for the sake of Christ. Tribulations. In the world, you will have what? Tribulations, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. Right? John 16, 33. Now, how many you got? How many do you have? Four. Thank you. <laughs> now, watch. Because the fifth one is recorded. Knowing. That's oida in the perfect tense. That means that you've studied and come to a conclusion that's based on faith. Knowing that tribulation, undeserved suffering, brings about perseverance. And the perseverance, there's, a de there's not a definite article with the first one, but there is with the second one. That'd be important for you to write down somewhere in your notes. Because definite article in the Greek language is everything. It's nothing in the English. It's everything in the Greek language. The first time he used perseverance, he didn't put a definite article, but the second time he did. Boom. And perseverance. Look, look up here. What's happening? Listen, listen to the words bringing about. Watch this now. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance, proven character, proven character hope. Agreed? It, it's one, it, this is not probably a good example, but it comes out of my generation. Chain smoking. You know what chain smoking was? Before you got the one down to bit, bit, burned your lip, you lit another one, right? Did you have an uncle like that or somebody? It'd get right down where it looked like, I, as a kid, I used to watch, I'd go like, he's going to burn his head. He's going to burn his head. And he would get that little thing and go off another one go. This is a chain of events of tribulation, undeserved suffering. Three characteristics. And it's part of your package 
under justification by faith. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance brings about proven character, and proven character, see, there's no definite article with it with that one. What? Pay it. Pay attention. No definite article with that. And proven character, the second time it's used, he puts a definite article with it. Because now as he's become a player. See, the first time he used it, he's he's on the football team, but the second time he's he's varsity. I don't know. All I can do is explain it. Proven character, watch. Now, now, proven character takes on a life of its own. Now he's a player. Are you with me? The definite article. Now he's a player. Just like perseverance. When he becomes a player, he produces proven character. When proven character becomes a starter, he takes on a life for the team. And it produces hope. It brings about hope. Agreed? Watch this now. Brings about hope. Verse 5, and hope, the second time hope is used, it's got a definite article. Hope is now a player. It's a main, it's, it's, a, it's a starting, he, he's on the starting team. He's on the varsity. He's starting. Along with perseverance and proven character, hope is now a varsity player. He could well be up for a Heisman. If he's got number six on him, his jersey. Now watch. The second time we got hope, it's got a definite article because he's a player. Under justification by faith. Hope. Now, have we had that before? Hope. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. We exalt in hope of the glory of God. That's confident expectation, by the way, not hope, 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 hope. This is, in the Greek language, elpis means confident expectation. Here, that hope has been developed in the character of a believer under justification by faith, where he's now a player for God in the game of life. And he, he's a player that plays as hope that does not disappoint. Isn't that marvelous? Hope that does not disappoint. When hope is brought to a place where it does not disappoint, I'm not disappointed, others are not disappointed in the hope of God, the confident expectation in God. You know why? Because God will do what he promised because God's faithful. Hope does not disappoint. When you become a player with hope under justification by faith, not just because you got it in phase one, but now you're, ex you're executed in phase two, you are now engaged in a hope that brings glory to God by your actions as a believer so that it does not disappoint. See, a hope without God will be disappointed. Hope without God is disappointing. Well, I was hoping for it, but it didn't come through. I was hoping, but it didn't come through. I was a hoping, but it didn't come through. It didn't come through. It didn't come through. I am hopeless. Not true. This is not how it works. This is hope in God. This is confident and expectation that what God's promised, he is able to bring it to performance. Boy, you're going to need it. I tell you, people, you're going to need it. 2021, you're going to need what I'm telling you today. Hope does not disappoint because 
Because, now how many, got, how many things you got on your paper? Five benefits of justification by faith. And he's run, them, he's run them like a series now. The hope does not disappoint because we got another player. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Isn't that magnificent? Six benefits of justification by faith. You need to bring the scriptural life that you study into the faith cycle and bring it to completion so God can develop your life where you become a player for God in the game of life. Where he can develop perseverance where you welcome it. I wouldn't have it any other way in my life, Father. Because what is, pure, what is perseverance going to produce in you when it becomes a player? What's it going to produce? What's it going to bring about? No, no. What's it going to bring about? No, it's not. What's it going to bring about? He's going to bring, what kind of character? Proven character. Now, I know you'd like to jump over him, but this is part of the series. Perseverance is going to bring about proven character. Proven character. Who's that character going to be about? Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's not about me. Proven character. The integrity to know that my life is secured in God no matter what happens around me. I could be like Job and I could lose all my worldly goods. I could lose all the details of life. I mean all, even down to children. I could even lose my health. But I will hold my integrity to God because I know my Redeemer liveth. That comes from Job, dear hearts. That passage comes from Job. Somewhere about the 19th chapter when he is in the pit of suffering for Christ. And what is God doing? He's developing perseverance to become a player in the life of a believer in the game of life. And out of that is going to come proven character with integrity for God. The devil can't take a thing from you because God has given you everything. The devil gives you nothing. He can't take nothing. God gives it. God takes it. You give way too much credit to the devil. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. The Holy Spirit that lives in you, the third member of the Godhead, is greater than anything in your life. Proven character is going to bring about hope that does not disappoint. Because. Because the love of God has been poured out within your hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to you. You know that fountain that flows from within? Of John 7, 37 through 39, of living water, flows from the blood of Emmanuel's veins to your life. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no Holy Spirit. There is no fountain within you. But when you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, his body hung on the cross for our sins, his blood paid the, you know, the final cost and wiped it out forever. You receive the Holy Spirit of God, the third member of the Godhead, who coaches you through your whole life. 
He will coach you through the perseverance. He will coach you through proven character. He will, pro he, he will be there and coach you to a place where hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in your heart by the very person who dwells within you. And he will give you the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy, hope. How magnificent a promise in Romans 5. All of that, listen, every bit of what I've just taught you out of the first five ver verses of five Romans, five verses, is under the banner of justification by faith. When Martin Luther discovered that, It changed the course of his life and Western civilization came into being. Now, he wasn't the only reformer. But he got his head in the word of God and the word of God got in his head and changed his life and his theology forever. It should yours too. It has mine. Well, I put five things on your paper that I've just talked about. I talked about the first benefit. I put it in the Greek language for you to get more information from it. I've told you how you get it. Peace with God. I meet so many Christians that don't have peace. But you know their problem? First of all, they don't know they have peace with God no matter what goes on in their life. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have peace with God. You will always have peace with God. That's the way he views you. Now, if you want experiential peace, if you want it experientially, you're going to have to learn to walk in the spirit, right? Galatians 5, 22, 23, uh, uh, right? The fruit of the spirit, love. That love's been poured out. That love that's been poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit of salvation is always there from God's side to you. God always sees you as his beloved child. But you see, it's how you view him. That's the question of your growth. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about peace with God being one of the nine. I put it on your paper. Communion factors in the 50 things you receive. I talked about on your paper. I'm not going to go through all this. I'm going to go home. But because you can read. The second benefit I talked about was the introduction into God's grace. You ought to pay attention to the Greek language. For example, the words we stand, histomy, is a perfect active indicative. You need to stand it. One thing is to have, listen. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 4, by grace shall you saved through faith. That's the way God views you. The moment you believe the gospel, you're saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift. That's the way God always views you. There will never be a day in your life after you've been born again that God doesn't see you that way. Now, how you see yourself, that's a whole different ballgame. You need to begin to see yourself the way God sees you. And, and listen, you don't have to perfect your flesh now that you're saved. You have to walk in the power of the Spirit who overcomes the flesh. My, 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 the church is so screwed up today about this stuff. They don't understand that salvation introduces you into the grace of God. It's just an introduction. There's a whole life there of living the grace of God out in your life. There's suffering grace, and there's growing grace, and there's a logistical grace. There's dying grace. Oh, what a magnificent thing it is, dying grace. Not just for the person who has it, but the person who holds a hand of one who does. My, my, my people. Mm. You ought to pay attention to the two perfect tenses I mentioned under point number two. You ought to pay attention to it. 
you know, a perfect tense means completed action in the past, the results remains completed in the present. That's a powerful idea, nothing like it in the English. You have to explain it in the English. You can just put it in perfect tense in the Greek and it goes like, locked down, it's locked, it's locked. It's in a locked position, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he says, which we stand. The, the third one I mentioned was the hope of the glory of God. You ought to pay attention. This little word chi in the English and, ah, in the Greek language, there's a unique way it's used. It's called adjunctive. And when it's used as an adjunctive, it connects something. It connects two things in the passage, sometimes as verbs, <coughs> sometimes as nouns, sometimes as prepositional phrases. It's dynamite. In verse 2, the last part of verse 2 under point 3, and is an adjunct of joining verbs, peace and grace. He joins them. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. Because we have peace and grace, that's the adjunctive power, those two verbs. We have, he said, he, he puts it, we have, we exult, we exult, we glory in the glory of God. We glory in the glory of God. We glory in the glory of God. Because I understand that I have peace with God. I'll always have peace with God. I have grace. I am in grace. I will always have grace with God. No matter, no matter. Because I've been born again, I always have it. The question is, what will I do with it? Your spiritual growth will depend on what you do with it. These are just powerful ideas. I don't know. You can read the rest. I, I've pretty much explained it all to you. I just put it down in more detail and more technical aspects of the Greek language for you. I want to thank you for coming today. I want to invite those who are entering into 21 with us, come to church. Let me tell you, you can get the virus anywhere. I got a dear, I got a dear couple in our family who locked down for nine months. Went out one time to the daughter's house. We had been free, her and her daughter had been free for, for nine months. I've been knowing you then, the daughter had picked it up, did not know it. Both families now have COVID. Let me tell you, it can find you. It can find you in a house. Or outside a house, they can find you. So what you going to do with it? Listen, if it's not COVID, it'll be something else. What is God teaching you? People, what is God teaching you? Where is the word of God? Are you, are you finding comfort in the word of God during this time? Are you walking the word out in your life? Are you living by faith? Are you walking by faith or fear? Listen, if it's fear, you'll always have fear in your life. You need to conquer it now. This, this little exercise in your life is for you to conquer fear. Can't live the Christian life in fear or doubt or any of these things. When they're, when they're on your plate, you got to deal with it. It's always going to be something. Listen, what is God trying to teach you? He's trying to teach you. Listen, it's okay. Be careful if you want to be careful. Let me tell you, you're in more danger driving to church in your car than you are dealing with COVID. I, I read a report the other day that said there were more deaths last year than this year.
without COVID. You know, the number of people who die from COVID would probably die anyhow by, by the end of the year from something that probably pneumonia because of health issues. And just about everybody I've known that had it recovered from it, even those who had health issues. They caught it quick and got after it. Listen, nobody dies ahead of time. We're all going to die on a schedule. We're going to die on schedule. That's a good thing. Listen, it's not about dying. You don't live to die. You live to live. Live your, listen, that's what he says. Proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Live your life for Christ. I'm not saying you shouldn't be careful about certain things. You should be careful with a virus just like careful with an automobile or, or if you're out hunting, be careful with firearms. It's just part of life. There's always something. God. Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way by the automobile and the Internet. I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit would do what he's, he, Jesus said he would do. He would teach and recall in John 14, 15, and 16. We look for that type of ministry from him, Father. We look for it in the preparation of our sermons. We look at in the deliverance of our sermons and for the fulfillment in the lives of the people. Thus saith the Lord. I pray, Father, help us. Help us be overcomers. Overcomers of our doubts and our fears. The sense of hopelessness. The sense, will, will our life ever be normal? Listen, I don't know what normal is for the Christian. What is normal? I don't know that we want to be normal. What's normal? Who decides what's normal? I mean, we're just, we're to live for God and let the chips fall where they fall. I mean, we're, we'll live in the power of the Holy Spirit, live in the power of the word of God. Be a great, a great testimony to people who are in fear over this. That's where my ministry has been. It's been to encourage believers who get fearful of all this. Well, encourage our hearts, Father. I pray as we approach January and February, we would be good, good stewards of foreign missions. We've got, we've got people who uh, have got families out there, and they've put their boots on the field. We need to the support them, not only in our prayers, but in our finances to help them. Keep those boots out there. People that not only can preach the truth of the gospel, but teach people how to spiritually grow to deal with life in such a way that God can conquer. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.